Welcome to Sandpiper, everyone. I am Gloria Higgins. I am the very proud principal of this amazing school. And um, you're gonna see a couple of reasons today um, with some of our parent volunteers that make it such a great school here. Um, so I'm excited to introduce you to them in a few minutes. Um, I've been here at Sandpiper. This is my second year. I actually made the move um, as principal here. Um, at the beginning of our first full year of distance slash hybrid learning. Um, it was quite a transition over that summer, um, but I have truly enjoyed being in the community um, with you, uh, with the students here and with the team at BRSSD. These are some of our um, staff members. You might recognize them if you've been in the office. Um, we have Leslie McGuire, who is our student services secretary. She supports uh, all of the health information that you might need to bring in for your students, such as proof of vaccination for chickenpox or measles, not necessarily COVID vaccines, but we encourage those as well. She's on the right in our picture here. And then on the left is Carmen Rogers. She is our school secretary. She handles all of the attendance, um, a lot of the customer service, whatever you need to do as you come into the office, Carmen is right there the first person you'll see, and she's very helpful. Um, we are also truly fortunate to have an amazing assistant principal, and her name is up there on the screen. That's Talia Carter, and you can see her email along with mine on this screen. By the way, as I said, this is being recorded, and these slides will be available if you need to review them later or want to share them one, with one of your friends. We'll put them on our website so you can find them there. All right, um, we also benefit tremendously from the uh, sweat equity of our parent volunteers and many organizations who support our schools. Um, you see PTA represented on this slide, School Force, which is the um, district's educational foundation, lots of volunteer opportunities for parents. Right now is a little tricky as we go through the Omicron surge, um, we're not having volunteers on campus, but we are looking forward to bringing them back just as soon as we can um, for classroom support, as room parents, uh, to support our lunchtime and recesses as yard duty supervision. We have field trips, um, looking forward to actually taking a field trip with our fifth graders in just a few weeks. Um, book fair, science fair, site council, ELAC, lots of opportunities for um, parents and guardians and family members to participate in large and small ways. And we really appreciate all that uh, parents and families do for us. With that, I'm going to introduce Ying Li, who is our School Force volunteer um, representative. She's gonna talk to you a little bit about School Force and she'll introduce Manal Elgendor, who is our PTA president. Um, and they're gonna talk just about how School Force and PTA work together. Ying, let me turn it over to you. All right, thanks, Ms. Hi, everyone. It's really nice to meet you. Um, my name is Ying, and I have a fourth grader and a first grader. You're about to join a great school district where parents come together to improve the quality of education for our kids. School Force is the education foundation that bridges the gap between the most basic education funded by the state and the wonderful and exceptional education that your kids will receive here at Sandpiper. The, the Sandpiper PTA will build community and advocate for the kids. Next slide. And through the volunteer and parent donations, many of the programs that makes our schools great, such as uh, elementary school art programs, libraries, technology, physical education programs, school counselors, and field trips and assemblies are all made possible by School Force and PTA. And this year, for this school year, together we raised more than $3 million to, to invest in our students and schools. And that those dollars are spent to build um, a better school system for every school in every grade and for every student. And with that, I'll turn it over to Manal to talk to you more about um, the work that we do.
sorry, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> In the fall, when you guys join Sandpiper, you'll hear the term ECC used a lot. And this stands for the Education Commitment Campaign. And it's basically just the partnership between School Force and PTA combined. And it's just our, it's our one fundraiser for the PTA that we um, have every year at the beginning of the school year. And it's what funds all of the community programming and everything that happens at Sandpiper. And then as on the broad how School Force raises money to help keep our class sizes small and everything that School Force does. So we're just kind of, you know, priming you now with that term and you'll hear a lot more about it in the fall. Um, and it's just really the, a great way to help contribute financially to, for us all to have a great year with our students. And before I turn it back over to Principal Higgins, I'll just introduce myself quickly. I'm in Algandor. I'm the current PTA president at Sandpiper this year. And I also have an incoming Tinder next year. So I'm here as a parent as well with all of you and looking forward to meeting all of you and your kindergartners next year too. So thank you, Mrs. Higgins. Thank you, Manal, and thank you, Ying. We really truly appreciate the hard work that our volunteers um, provide for our students. It makes a tremendous difference. I can't emphasize that enough. So thank you very much. Um, both financially and with your time and energy, it really is incredible. All right. So we do have at Sandpiper um, annual school goals. This is part of what it means to be a public school. We set a school plan every year that is monitored by our school site council. Um, and actually, Rami is in the audience as well tonight with a new kindergartner coming in. She's one of our um, school site council parent representatives. That's a way in which you can volunteer if you choose. Um, these are just the goals that we have this year. Um, there's always an academic goal, and you can see actually two there. Um, one or more years worth of growth for all of our students in language, arts, and math. And that really is a focus on taking students from where they are and helping them continue to grow at least a year's worth um, in their skills and in their knowledge. So when a student is already exceeding standards, we still want them to make progress. We don't want to rest on our laurels with our students who are already meeting or exceeding our standards. And for our students who might need a little more time or a little more support to get up to grade level standards, we want to accelerate their learning so that they're making at least a year's worth and closing that gap between where they are and grade level standards. Um, we also have similar goals for our students who happen to be learning English as a second or third language. So um, we have a goal that they will grow in their English proficiency at least one year's worth um, over the course of a year. Um, we also have a school climate goal for um, all of our students. We want to see them uh, feeling more of a sense of belonging we have an incredible student body and we're already um, an amazing campus with um, great, a great sense of community among our students and we want to keep that going. We want to increase that. So we do take a survey every year. Um, parents who are current parents watch out for that coming in the next few weeks and we want to see those um, student self-reported sense of belonging increase. And we have a parent inclusion goal or a parent participation goal where students will, uh, parents will feel um, more uh, informed about how their student is doing towards grade level standards and academic skills. And also they will report that they understand better how to help their students um, at home. And we are working hard on all of those goals right now. I expect that we will meet them um, fairly easily. Thank you. So um, as you head into the enrollment process, um, there is a little bit of information I want you to have here. Um, for those of you who do have current siblings at the school site, enrollment is handled here at Sandpiper and you can just pop into the office and Ms. Rogers will um, support you with that process. If you are new to BRSSD or new to Sandpiper, um, new student enrollment opens on January 26th, and that is handled centrally through our district office, and you can actually do the work online for that. Um, you'll need the following items. You're going to need an online enrollment form, and you'll see the um, access to the slides in just a moment. Um, those will be shared on our website, and I can put a link in the chat at the end. 
um, and the link to the online enrollment form is here. You're going to need um, an ID or a driver's license, an ID card, a passport, something like that, that shows that you are who you say you are. Um, you'll need your student's birth certificate or passport, proof of res residency, that could be a property tax bill or a lease or a rental agreement. Um, and you'll need at least one or two of the following items, a PG&E water bill, cable bill, phone um, bill, cell phone bill, or garbage bill, any kind of utility bill, but you'll need two of those. Um, your student's immunization records. And I do want to say here that um, the state of California no longer accepts exemption for immunization based on religious reasons. Um, if your student has a medical reason for which they um, it's not advised for them to get an, a, a particular vaccine, then that is accepted, but we do not accept exemptions from vaccination for medical reasons or personal belief. I'm sorry, for religious reasons or personal belief. If your student has an active IEP, an, an individual education plan, or an active 504 plan, please do have that handy for registration as well. Um, we want to know about that so that we can prepare for your student and make sure all the services and supports they need are in place when they start on day one. All right, typical day in kindergarten. Um, and if you're here for TK, please know this applies to you as well. I tend to say kindergarten, but our TKs are here as well and we love having them here. Um, this year, our bell schedule has been staggered and that has been to support um, our COVID uh, safety and uh, hygiene measures to try and keep people from gathering um, at the front. These times may change next year and we will communicate that over the summer so that you are well informed about start time and end time and when students have snack and recess. But this is a sample um, schedule. This is what it is for TK and kindergarten. You can see that they start at 815 and um, they enjoy a half hour recess. Um, and TK goes home just about lunchtime. Kindergarten has a lunchtime and an afternoon recess that are combined. They spend 20 minutes eating and 20 minutes playing. And then kindergarten is dismissed at 1.15 on most days, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And they're dismissed at 12.10 on our minimum days, Wednesdays. Parents, you should prepare for the idea, the fact that all of our Wednesdays are what we call minimum days. Um, those are early release days so that staff may collaborate, plan, work together, um, complete report cards, that kind of work um, so that we can uh, be in good communication with you. Um, please don't arrive on campus any earlier than 10 minutes before the start of the day. So this year that's 8.05. Um, that's important for supervision reasons for students. And really that's plenty of time to get um, into the parking lot, uh, students out, the, out of the car and into the classroom. So don't arrive any earlier than, than 10 minutes before your bell time. There are two child care options and they are private providers or um, separate from Sandpiper School, but they are here on our campus. The first one there is Champions um, and you can see that uh, Michelle McLaughlin's email is there. Um, they do provide both before school care and after school care should you need either of those options. That is a um, Again, a private provider, there is a registration fee and a registration process that you would need to go through separately to enroll with them. They do fill up quickly. So if you know that you're gonna need that childcare, um, I'd start reaching out to them as soon as possible. Um, and we also have Sandpiper Youth Club, which is run through the city of Redwood City and Talisha Brent is the director there. Sandpiper Youth Club serves TK through fifth grade students, same as champions. We do not have a um, uh, care program for middle schoolers on site. They're, they're a little older and a little more able to take care of themselves. There are um, after school sports or after school activities uh, throughout the year that they may participate in. And I'm gonna show you just a little video here. Um, this is from last year, but uh, okay. the two teachers are our current kinder Piper. teachers. This is our front office. And as you can see, we're going through the gate. And we're going to 
meet our first teacher in room one. Hi, I'm Margaret Watson. I teach kindergarten in room one. I've been teaching here for over 20 years and I can't wait to meet the next group of kids. Now we're moving on to room two and we're going to meet our next teacher. Hello everyone, welcome to kindergarten. I'm Miss Janopin, Karen Janopin. Um, I'm so excited to meet all of you next year. Now we're walking and I'll just pause right there to say that Miss Janopin was married over the summer. Her new name is Miss Kuheyana. Um, and Miss Watson and Miss Kuheyana, who you just saw, are the kindergarten teachers for next year. I'll talk a little bit more about um, the staffing um, when we're done with the video. Moving on to room three to meet our next teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Emma Wilson and I teach kindergarten at Grim Paper in room three. I can't wait to meet all of you and go K! Here are the snack and lunch tables and now we're going to room four. Hi, I'm Jean Grabowski, better known as Miss Jean. I hope you enjoyed our mini tour. Here's some photos of TK and K. All right, let me see if I can get out of here. Hello, parents. And there's always just a little trick as we get back into our slideshow after this. Thank you for your patience as I move on. So while I'm getting us back to the uh, slide where we wanna be, Ms. Chinopin, sorry, Ms. Kuheyana and Ms. Watson are our kindergarten teachers this year. We have two kindergarten classes this year. Um, I am really hopeful and excited at the, pros the prospect that we may have three kindergarten classes next year. And um, our TK teacher this year is Ms. Coffey. Um, you saw Ms. Um, Grabowski in the video. She is retired and Ms. Coffey has replaced her. Um, we will have one TK class next year. All right, um, some tips for you as we get ready for our kids to start in TK or kindergarten. Um, great things to practice, basic self-care tasks. Make sure your student can use the bathroom on their own, including any hygiene that's involved, wiping and hand washing. Um, being able to button, snap, zip their own clothes, tying their own shoes. Yes, they can do it. Kindergartners can learn to tie their shoes. Um, I see it happen every year. It's a miracle, um, but they can do it. Um, making sure they can wash their hands, as I said. Opening snacks and lunches. Sometimes those Tupperware lids or those container lids are really hard. Make sure that your student can open those. And of course, masks. Um, I hope very optimistic that we won't need them constantly next year, um, but I do anticipate that we will need them seasonally. So do make sure that they're comfortable wearing masks, they have a good fitting mask. Um, writing their name is helpful, um, recognizing the letters of their name, recognizing and writing the letters A to Z, 
counting and writing numbers one through 10 and cutting with scissors, all good things to practice as they head into kindergarten. Um, do know if they can't quite get to writing all the letters A to Z or getting all those numbers down, those are kindergarten standards and they will learn those over the course of the year or at least the first trimester. Um, but a little advanced um, peek at those is helpful. Um, with our kindergarten and TK curriculum, we incorporate social emotional skills. We have a program called Second Step that the teachers implement in the classroom to help students with um, emotional awareness, being able to identify and name their own emotions, and then also recognizing them in others and solving conflicts as they may come up. Listening and communication skills as part of our curriculum motor skills. You saw in that little video clip, the students were taking a little movement break. So we definitely incorporate physical education with both um, credentialed physical education teachers and with our classroom teachers. Um, of course, the core content of language arts, math, science, and social studies are part of our um, curriculum. Thanks to our PTA and school force, we have enrichment opportunities like art and music. Um, and then you can just see there a list of our adopted curriculum uh, and programs in the BRSSD, BRSS, uh, the Belmont Redwood Shores School District. Those are there. And at the bottom is a link to the kindergarten standards that parents may be interested in perusing. I mentioned art and dance. I'm really excited because the dance instructor just started a few weeks ago for our kindergarten through second grade students. Um, and it is a treat to hear some of the uh, oldies music coming out of the, uh, the classroom and seeing the kids really uh, enjoying the dance and the movement. So thank you PTA for supporting that. Um, design thinking is a strategy and a primary um, initiative here at Sandpiper. We are committed to becoming a full design thinking school. We're rolling it out, um, trying things out this uh, trimester with our staff and rolling out parts of it next year. Um, in kindergarten, the picture that you see there is Ms. Kuheana's class where she incorporated design thinking into um, core literature for kindergarten. The kindergartners read a Halloween poem, The Five Little Pumpkins, and then in true design thinking fashion, they empathized with a customer or end user. They thought about the pumpkins and what do the pumpkins need? They need to sit on a fence. So then they designed and prototyped and um, revised their designs to test out um, the, the prototypes that they made for their pumpkins to sit on. So you can see some students there uh, trying out the seats that they made or the fence posts that they made for their, their pumpkins. They've also done it with the Three Billy Goats Gruff, designing and building a bridge for the goats to cross over um, to avoid the troll. So very exciting to see the kindergartners um, already engaging and empathizing with users and, and customers and trying out different designs and iterating on their designs. Um, we do have a makerspace here at Sandpiper that is reopening um, and classrooms are taking advantage of. And you also saw in the video, one of our events in kindergarten, which was Pumpkin Town. There's a typo on the slide there. I see that we forgot to write town, but the kids really enjoy those real life um, simulations, hands-on activities where they can apply the skills that they learn in the classroom and learn by working together. Speaking of communication skills, um, that takes a lot of communication to be able to work together. We have many ways that we communicate here at Sandpiper. As you are registering, you will need to make sure that you use your preferred email um, for registration. That's how we're going to be able to communicate with you over the summer when we set up playdates um, for kindergartners to get to know each other or TKers to get to know each other. Do watch out for those communications. Um, once you are uh, enrolled and active at school, you will get an invitation to join Parent Square. That's where I send my weekly newsletter from, messages to the community. Um, any special announcements go through Parent Square. Teachers also um, universally across the campus use Parent Square. There's a classroom messaging group. There's a whole school messaging group. 
Um, it is our primary communication tool for official school business. Um, so you're definitely going to want to join Parent Square. Um, we have a website. Web, uh, the address is right there. I hope it's uh, full of good information for you. We worked hard on making sure that it's useful, easy to use, and you can find the information that you need there. I'm always open to suggestions if there's something that you're looking for that you can't find, but do check that out. Um, we're fairly active on social media. Um, our PTA does a great job of helping us uh, keep up to date on Facebook and you can find us there. And PTA, once you are a PTA member, um, actually Manal, you may, maybe can jump in there. You don't have to be a member to get the e-news, is that correct? You don't have to be a member. The e-news goes out to everybody, um, but you have to be enrolled in the school. So unfortunately, our new communication platform doesn't allow us to have anyone unless they are currently in the school. So the um, anyone who's entering Sandpiper new the, uh, in the fall won't start getting the e-news until the August 31st edition, I, I believe, probably, yeah. Right, probably, whatever that first edition is after the start of the school year. Yeah. Thank you, Manel. That's the end of my formal presentation, but I did include in the slideshow the presentation that I made to the Board of Trustees as we were presenting some of the key initiatives that happen at Sandpiper. I'm just going to click through quickly again uh, the who we are. You see those lovely parent volunteers um, putting together some cabinets for us. Um, we did work hard on our profile of a graduate. These are the traits that we strive to ensure our eighth graders leave our school with. Um, we talked a little bit about design thinking in middle school students and experience genius hour. Um, there's some pictures that you can see through here. Empathy is one of our profile of a graduate traits and we're very fortunate to have a full-time counselor. That's Mr. Stark there, who does an amazing job with social emotional curriculum for our students. Um, that was more of his presentation there. I'm going to skip through that. Um, we have, uh, again, thanks to the support of our PTA, been uh, able to host a parent information session and a teacher training on supporting student resiliency, um, which was fantastic. You can see some of that information there. And then I will just let you um, click through there, some design thinking happening there. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so you can see my face and I can see yours if you're comfortable being recorded. Um, and I'll take any questions that you might uh, have. And at this time, um, we've got about 20 people in the room. That's a great size. I'm gonna let you manage your own um, mute buttons. If you feel you have a question to ask, feel free to unmute yourself and jump in. Um, if it starts to get a little bit chatty, then um, using the chat feature is another great way to ask some questions. Jump on in. Hi, Gloria. This is Raj. Hi, Raj. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great. Thanks. Great session. And thank you for sharing. Um, You're welcome. Quick question. So you kind of mentioned about the aftercare programs. Yes. Uh, and so we, this will be our first kindergarten. So our, our, our son is going to be uh, trying to enroll into kindergarten. So is that usually after the school district informs that you've got the school is when you kind of go and register for those after school programs or can you reach out to them ahead of time? I think it's a good idea to reach out to them ahead of time. They may have their own timeline for registration. And um, if you start reaching out to them now, you're less likely to miss any deadlines. So I'd encourage you to reach out early. Sounds good. Thank you. Absolutely. Gloria, one more question. Uh, on the school, like how many students do you have per class? Per classroom? Um, great question. So total campus-wide right now, we have about 575 students. 
Um, we do have room for more on the order of 625 students. Right now in our kindergarten classrooms, the maximum size is 25 students and we have about 22 or 23 in kindergarten right now. TK right now, we have about 22. Um, and again, maximum size for TK is 25. Thank you. I'm sure. Other questions? Don't be shy. Yeah, quick question. I uh, just want to confirm if we have a student currently in TK, do we have to wait until the 26th to register? No, you have a currently enrolled sibling. Are you enrolling them in kindergarten or are you enrolling a sibling in TK? Or both? We just we just have the one student in TK. So I would I have to enroll her again in kindergarten, right? But do I need to wait or can I do it now? Um, you do not need to wait. You can, uh, if you wanna stop by and see Ms. Rogers in the office, um, she can direct you most appropriately, but I believe you're going to get an, an intent to return survey and you'll be automatically enrolled in kinder. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, Gloria, quick question about um, just the snack and the lunch and sorry about the background noise, that's fine. No problem. Bye. <laughs> My little one. Um, uh, lunch and snack, is that something that they can purchase on campus or do we just bring everything in? Yes, and let me just distinguish between TK and kindergarten. Um, next year, we are uh, rolling out, and I don't have all the details about it yet, but we are rolling out a breakfast program, and that might be either before school breakfast or just after the bell breakfast which potentially has, has the potential to be a recess snack if they wanna pick it up later. For TK, students go home at lunchtime, but you do have the option to purchase a school lunch or if you're eligible for free and reduced lunch to receive that lunch, um, students get it delivered to the classroom at recess time and they take it home with them if they're in TK. If they are in kindergarten, um, students do uh, pick that lunch up right at the beginning of the lunch period and eat it on campus. And I think your question was more directly about, are, is it available for purchase? Absolutely. Um, any family may register for our lunch program. And if you're eligible for free and reduced lunch, it is either free or reduced price for you. Um, if you're not eligible for that, you can purchase the lunch. All right, perfect, thank you. Yeah. I can't have done that great a job of anticipating all of your questions. What else are you wondering? Uh, I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, about the documentation for enrollment, do you need the original birth certificate or passport or a copy would do it? I believe you need the original, but Victor, in our district office or Ms. Rogers here at Sandpiper can um, guide you if you need, if you don't have the original or and let you know what might be acceptable. Okay, thank you. Sure. I'm really good at wait time as a teacher. It's important to wait for uh, students to get all their thinking out. So I, uh, I will wait another 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds or so, any other last minute questions? Thank you, teacher Gloria. We joined super late, we missed everything. So we have no questions because of that. But hopefully we will <laughs> check out the recording and I'm sure we'll have a few at that stage. Yes, uh, the but, recording will be available on the website as will the slide presentation. But go ahead, ask your question, it's okay. No, we don't have, I mean, we were just like thinking about this. We, 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 I'm so sorry that we missed the first half, but what are some questions that you've gotten in previous years, I guess, that we haven't been asked so far that you think are <laughs> worth asking? I, I just can't, because we missed the entire first half of the presentation, so we don't know what yeah. you said. One so, question, sure. thank you, but that's a great question. What other questions do people ask? Um, one question that I get, especially for families who are interested in after-school care, is they want to make sure that students are escorted from the classroom to the aftercare program. And NTK and kindergarten, both Champions and Sandpiper Youth Club pick students up at the door. 
and make sure they get from our classroom to their care program safely um, and escorted. So that's a good question that I get asked a lot. Um, trying to think if there are any other questions I can remember off the top of my head. Um, sometimes I get questions about if a student has a learning disability or a special need, what the process for that is. Um, and if there is an existing IEP or an existing 504 plan to support a student with a physical or learning disability, yes, we absolutely provide services for all of those. It's helpful for us to know if you have that already. Um, so that we can prepare. Um, if you're concerned about your students' progress um, and they don't already have a learning disability or an IEP or um, any kind of identified supports, um, we encourage you to give it a few weeks, let the teachers get to know the students over the course of the first few weeks of school. Um, we do have parent-teacher conferences that happen in late October, early November, um, and don't worry. Um, kids are on their own kind of developmental track and they all kind of get where we want them to go um, in their own place in their own time, um, but we can we can support them for sure. Awesome, I think you got the juices flowing now my wife has a question I'll turn it over oh, to her. Okay, great. Hi, Hi Mr. Gloria. Um, our daughter is, um, I think she'd go into TK. Um, wondering, given that uh, this is like just September to December kids, wondering how big the class size normally is? Yeah, this year our TK class is about 20, 22 students. Um, the largest it can get is 25. Got it. And because of COVID, uh, was there like during the times there were multiple times when the kids had to be remote learning? Was that the case? So this year, this this past school year, 21-22 school year, no, we have not had distance learning as an option for students. Um, our district does offer um, this year an independent learning for families who either are not comfortable with the idea of being in person at school, either because of a medical need or um, just a concern about the spread of COVID. Um, that is really a long-term commitment. It's not intended to be just a couple weeks here and there. We have cases of COVID on our campus. And those of you who are current parents um, know that I've been sending out a lot of community case letters um, as we go through the Omicron surge. But for the most part, um, we're very safe here at school. I would say there's probably about 8% uh, or so right now of cases of our students or our staff members who have had, actually lower than that if I include the staff, um, cases of COVID over the course of this year. Um, probably giving you more information than you asked for, um, but since we're really still thinking about COVID, we have many layers of protection for families and students on campus. Um, I said earlier in the presentation, volunteers are not currently allowed on campus unless it's for yard duty. So we've limited um, contacts in that way. Um, we do have masks inside at all times and masks are strongly encouraged outside. Really the only time kids are not wearing their mask is when they're eating lunch. Um, we have improved and increased ventilation through open doors and windows. All of our HVAC filters have been upgraded to hospital grade. We did that last year. We also have air filters and purifiers in the classrooms, in every classroom um, for kiddos. Teachers have incorporated frequent hand washing and sanitizing um, as part of their routine, and the rooms are sanitized, especially the high-touch surface areas um, throughout the day. So we're very, very safe COVID-wise. Excellent, thank you so much. That was, um, yeah, just to make sure kids are all safe and teachers Hi, definitely. Yes. Um, I had like another question, Hi, um, given that uh, there'll be kids from kindergar kindergarten to um, the, uh, K through five, right? So oh, how is the play area uh, so that like, are, are, uh, TK are the kids going to play together? Are or? the kids playing together? Right. Yeah. So we do have separate play areas for students. And this year we also have separate play time. So the kindergarten and TK um, play at the same time. 
um, and eat at the same time. So they're the only ones at the tables when it's time for them to eat. And they're the only ones on the play structures when it's time for them to play. We actually have students um, in TK through eighth grade here at Sandpiper and um, TK and K play and eat together. First and second play and eat together. Third grade has their own play time. Fourth and fifth grade play together. And then the middle school has their recess time and lunch time together. We have a new question, teacher earlier, but like, is everyone automatically like guaranteed enrollment, or is there like any kind of like capacity constraint on how many kids can actually attend? <laughs> so capacity constraint in terms of the size of the school is about six hundred and twenty-five, and we do have space in our campus. Um, whether or not you are enrolled at Sandpiper depends upon how many other people are enrolling. And so the number of kindergarten classrooms depends on how much enrollment we get. If we only get well, like 40 to 50 kids enrolling, then we'll have two kindergarten classes, for example. And then if we get another you know, 10 kids enroll, we can't really open a class with just 10 kids. And so they may not be able to attend Sandpiper. So if you think about those chunks of 25, um, we really hope for those kinds of numbers, 25, 50, 75, um, each 25 gets a new class. And, and so that would be at the time of enrollments? Like, is it the first come first serve or like how would, it, how would you determine the class size at a given point? So we take an enrollment period um, and as long as you live in the neighborhood and um, we have the staffing for that number of students, then you're fairly likely to get in if you're in the neighborhood. Um, if for some reason we become over enrolled, you may be um, assigned to another school site, ideally some a school site that's close to you. My, my best advice to you is to enroll early and um, just be in touch and be in communication. All right, any other questions? We just got back to you, Gloria. Sorry, we got disconnected. Oh, that's okay. I was just saying my best advice is enroll early and, and stay in touch. Has there ever been a time when you had to like send students away or has that never happened in rubber shores? It does happen. <laughs> it's not likely. You're like you're likely to get sent. If you if you live in this neighborhood, you're likely to be assigned to camp. Awesome. Hoping for the best. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Me too. All right. With that, I just want to thank Ying and Manal one more time. Thank you for being here to share um, your work with School Force and PTA. Thank you to all the families who have joined us. And I see some kids on the videos too. It's nice to see them. Um, do stay in touch. Uh, we will communicate play dates over the summer so the kids can get to know each other and see what the campus looks like. Um, and do uh, visit the, the district's enrollment page and get your online enrollment forms ready to go. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>